Yes, we are just a week away from previewing the Masters. But that's next week. This week we have the Texas Open here on Tee Off with Jan Stevenson, YouTube channel. Jan will actually be at the Masters, so she'll be there for a day, I believe, maybe more. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll touch base with Jan and uh, get her opinion and analysis on what's going on next week. But this week it's the Texas Open, the Texas Two-Step, Houston Open last week, Jared. And it looked like uh, you out there putting uh, in the last hour or two. Uh, and, <laughs> and, uh, I mean, seriously, what the hell is going on there? Nobody can make a putt, including Dietrich. I mean, Dietrich needs to, like, go get a, I don't know, cold shower or something because, yeah. uh, I don't know, that was bad. I mean, for for me, for having no one in the mix and having you know nothing to really root for, it, that was that was a fun that was a fun Sunday. Right? Yeah, there were a, a lot of guys going on. Yeah, mix, including Scheffler. I like that golf course. You know, I, again, I I had honestly never seen that course before because I don't watch golf in the fall. Um, I thought it was a cool course, a lot of cool holes, especially down the stretch. I mean, the the, the par five, six, sixteen's a, a good hole. Um, and I thought. I saw a lot of similarities to that course as we're going to see next week at Augusta. Um, I think it was, it's a good course for those guys to tune up, you know, just a long course. The rough was not punishing, obviously a lot of, you know, tricky runoffs around the green. So again, not, I don't want to comp that course sure. to Augusta, but I just saw some similarities. I think it was a good course for those guys to play who are going to be playing next week and a, a nice tune up for them. Yeah, because I don't, I don't. There are several players that'll be playing this week as well that played last week, uh, but uh, the big name players, that's not the case. Uh, any of the right. big name players who played last week uh, will be taking this week off, and vice versa. And some didn't didn't play either. Um, Justin Thomas is one. Um, I'm sure there's uh, Patrick Cantlay, Sandra Schauffele. So there, there's some guys who just skipped it uh, altogether. Uh, but yeah, it was fun in that respect. It was great to see Jaeger. We knew he was going to get a win sooner or later. You could, and see, that's the thing we talk about all the time with golf. When you've never won an event and you've come close before and it's hard for you to get over the hump, not that you're choking necessarily, but it's just hard. You just, you know, you're not getting the breaks. Sometimes what happens is the easiest way to get in is you just do okay you don't do anything wrong and then you let everybody else screw up or like what we saw on sunday late not make a putt and because if dietrich makes a couple of putts maybe he wins and jaeger loses another close one so but that's why you have to keep putting yourself in position to win scotty scheffler makes a five foot putt on 18 he he probably wins because I, I don't think jaeger is going to beat him in a playoff um so yeah that was definitely the story that I, you know jaeger Definitely seems like he has a type of course, right? Because he came third at Farmers, he came third at Mexico, and then he won the Houston Open. Those are all long, driver-heavy courses. Pretty difficult as well, you know, at least in terms of uh, Houston Open and Farmers. So that's definitely something to keep in mind going forward with Jaeger. I think that's the type of course we want to you know invest in him on. All right. So, uh, again, next week is the Masters, and uh, we can uh, uh, pop up the uh, current odds and we've been looking at this for a few months now. Look at Scotty as the overwhelming favorite there at four to one, and it's the same scenario. But we finally get to see the Live Boys, and that's going to be the fun part of it, uh, including John Rahm, uh, who's, yeah. who's, who's, who's got a green jacket, and he's sitting there getting three times the number. See, mm. that is just that's that's why it's kind of tough to take Scheffler. In this event, you have to do sort of like that's why I, I did that parlay, uh, which is still up by the mm. way. I did that parlay with Purdue winning the national championship and Scotty Scheffler mm. winning the Masters because I'm like, you know what? Nice. I can't just do them straight. I just can't. I, I need a I need a parlay of some sort because it's just why would I do that when I've got five or ten other really top end golfers that are getting three or four times the number that Scheffler is. Fingers crossed for Purdue because I have uh, some some big money on them as well in the Cal. Okay. So hopefully, they, hopefully they can go. get it done. Uh, yeah, I think I think um, Scheffler being Scheffler is not three times as likely to win this as John Rahm. Now we're the, the live guys play this week um, in Miami, so I'm gonna try to catch as much of that as I can just to see how these guys are looking coming in. Because honestly, you know, I, I look at this betting board and we, you know, it's kind of been the theme of the PGA Tour season is just a lot of the 
better golfers have just had disappointing seasons so far. Yep. So that has me even more interested in these live guys, um, specifically Brooks Kapka and Camps uh, Camp Smith are two guys I'm eyeing um, as as bats at Augusta. So again, I, I really want to catch as much of that live tournament as I can uh, just to see how uh, these guys are playing coming into next week. Yeah, because uh, look, Smith is still getting a solid 28, and he's right now yeah. playing uh, his best golf of the season. Uh, you got to be concerned now with Wyndham Clark and that silly little injury. So we'll find out whether or not. And again, as we've mentioned, he hasn't played there before. Look at Dustin Johnson at 35 to 1. Uh, he's already got a win on Live so far this year. Uh, so, I mean, you know, you get some really big names with, uh, with some big uh, numbers out there. And, uh, you know, you, you, you talked about Thagala last week. You know, he's at 55 to 1. Um, but, uh, you know, at this point, you know, it's a little bit too late to be trying to look for bargains. Nothing is going to change dramatically uh, between this week and next week or really the last couple of weeks. So um, but you know what? If you were a little late this time around, just you know, use it for the U.S. Open or the PGA or the Open Championship or sometimes it's even too late there. It's really good to get a jump start on the major futures like right around February. You know, where you get yeah. a little bit of an idea on that West Coast swing. Once some of those big events start, and you kind of, all right, you know, do, do I think that so-and-so or so-and-so is, is going to have a good year? Well, I'm going to gamble that he is because his numbers are pretty big at some of these major events, and that's the best time of year to, to start to throw money on futures. Yeah, for sure. I think at this point, especially at the top of the board, most of these numbers will be better next week than they are right now. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm kind of done making any um, Masters futures bets until uh, – next monday all right so that is what's going on over at the masters next week of course we're going to have uh big time coverage for that the texas open just gonna just uh, throw the odds up there for uh, a sec here as mcelroy is the favorite at nine to one and then you see uh ludwig is the solid second choice which is yeah. really kind of strange isn't it to see spieth mm -hmm. matsuyama homa fitzpatrick almost getting double than Ludwig. I mean, come on, what's that? Yeah. I mean, f famous last words, this might sound stupid at this time next week, but I, I think, I think Ludwig's a bit overvalued here. Um, you know, and, and I don't even think not even compared to Rory. Cause I think Rory's overvalued too at nine to one, just, he's not having a good season. He missed the cut here last year. I just, I think he's the type of guy I would worry about how much, how focused is he on this event versus, you know, just trying to tune up for Augusta. So, but yeah, I mean, Ludwig being that far ahead of Spieth and Matsuyama and Homa and, you know, Morikawa, we don't even see on this board right now. Um, I, I think that's, that's gone a bit too far. Yeah. I, I, I'm not sure why, especially, uh, especially since he's uh, played here once and is seven over par missing the cut. I mean, what? Okay. All right. But we'll get into that in a little bit, but uh, first let's take a look at your stats of the week. And so we popped that up. There you go. Top 10 in course history the last five years. What a big surprise. Corey Connors is the top of the list. And then top 10 in ball striking. And you see the little mathematical formula you have there. So talk about why you put that one there as, uh, your, as a part of your stats this week. Yeah, it's kind of a, a stat I just created myself this week. Because ball striking is a stat you'll hear all the time. Um, now, when you hear ball striking, it's 50% off the tee and 50% approach you know they're they're weighed evenly where is if you look at you know what's most predictive in terms of you know pga tour events strokes gain approach tends to be about twice as predictive as or you know twice as important as strokes gain off the tee so i weighed it that way where i you know gave um strokes gain approach twice the weight of strokes gain off the tee and the reason i went with this stat for this week is this is a pretty vanilla cookie cutter course where there's nothing that really sticks out about it whereas you know is you know something being more important than usual you know it's not really a big driving distance course it's not really a big long iron course it's just kind of a pretty vanilla uh, pga tour course so there's nothing that really stuck out i just wanted to look at who's hitting the ball best you know t to green so far this season and that's when you know the, this top 10 in ball striking uh shows you and look at Corey connor's <laughs> number one there um so um I don't love the value on him this week at, at that number. What is he, 25 to 1 now? But he is hitting it well. It's a course he likes. Um, and some other interesting names on the list as well. I know uh, a few of my bets are on here. Um, not sure about you, but yeah. Ludwig's. Ludwig's on there. There Ludwig's it is. Ludwig's on there at 10. He's at 10. Yeah. yeah. 
Ludwig. Uh, but Matsuyama, you know, those are the top, those are the two big names on the list. And Matsuyama right. is off to a good start this year. And Matsuyama should be uh, probably right now the second choice, to tell you the truth. Him and Homa. I agree. I so, agree. Yeah. But whatever. Okay. So there you go. Those are the key stats to keep. And look, there aren't many big trends uh, since this, uh, for whatever reason. And look, they have been playing there for, uh, I think this is going to be the 14th event at TPC San Antonio. Um, I think what I did find out is that uh, over the uh, 13 events that you have had, long shots win. But let's keep this in mind. This year is completely different. Because of the fact that it is, um, they're just away with the signature event schedule and everything. You've got players that have really not played here before, like big name players or players that haven't played here in a while. And so uh, this normally is is an event where you get like one player in the top 25 or something like that. And I think there are six in the top 12, I believe. Uh, so that's highly unusual. But there have been a lot of long shots that have won here. Matter of fact, nine of the 13 winners ranked outside the top 50. Seven of them ranked outside the top 100, including 232, 242, 285, and 336. So if you're looking for a big long shot, this could definitely be the week. Matter of fact, almost half of the winners here have, have won their uh, maiden PGA Tour event as well. Yeah, again, it's always tricky, these events before majors just – we can't know how focused these top guys are on this event. I, uh, interesting trend I found eight of the last 11 winners of this event were not already qualified for the masters. And then of course, if you win this event, you get into the Masters. So eight of the, eight of the last 11 guys, you know, needed to win here to get into Augusta. Interesting. Okay. That always, always is something that you got to look forward to. I mean, it's a, it's a nice little story on Sunday. Yep. If you take yep. a look at anybody that's uh, – because that's all it is. It's, just, it's not about, hey, let me get into the Masters so I can try to win. No, it's like, let me get, get into the Masters because maybe I've never been there before and what a great time it's going to be. I can't believe I'm actually playing in the Masters, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So it's a nice uh, little side story. Um, okay. So uh, let's – get to it and i i'm gonna i have a and and this is going right down the line of doing doing some research regarding events just before majors i'm not i'm not taking mcelroy this week on my picks but i am because i i and and and, be, and it's only because i am just i i need a win and one and done and i'm seriously thinking of, of, of putting rory in there and i'm gonna tell you why and that's because I really think Rory's going to win this week. Um, let's take a look at some real cool history lessons from Rory McIlroy before majors. Last year, he won the Scottish Open. And th- and that, of course, was right before. And uh, he also uh, won the Canadian Open in 2022 and 2019. And that was before the U.S. Open. He won Wells Fargo in 2021 which was two weeks before the PGA, but it was his last event before the PGA. He won match play, if you want to throw in even the so-called fifth major. He won match play before TPC in 2015 and went Quell Hollow the week before the TPC in 2010. And he won the week before the PGA at a WGC event. I believe it was the Bridgestone in 2014. So Rory is probably the player that has won the most before majors. Uh, that's, how he, that's how much he kind of takes it seriously. Mm-hmm. And what's also interesting is I mentioned the U.S. Open. I mentioned the Open Championship, which came uh, after the Scottish Open. I also mentioned the PGA. I did not mention the Masters. So this is the only event, this is the only pre-event uh, schedule that he has not uh, taken advantage of to win before a major. And we also know it's the right. only major he hasn't won yet. So mm-hmm. I kind of like all that, like karma. I also think that we all know that Rory is like just, you know, he's kind of, you know, he's getting close. He just hasn't put it all together. So I yeah. think out of all those players that you're talking about, you know, is their head going to be on straight? This is the player that has proven, yes, he wants to win. He wants to play at his best before a major. And considering the slow start he's gotten off to and the field this week, I see him actually as a pretty good play at 9-1. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm with you that I do think Rory's close. I mean, you look at his results so far this year, he doesn't have a finish better than 19th. Um, but, but, but again, I, I do think he's close because he's, he, he's had stretches and most of all these tournaments were, were like, it's looked like he was going to win or at least be in the, in the mix where he, he gets hot. He's just had too many bad holes, too many mistakes, you know, too many water balls on those Florida courses, too many, you know, you know misfires with his irons. Um, so he just needs to clean that stuff up. Yeah. You know, I'm sure he would love to have a strong event heading into the master. So, um, yeah, I mean, listen, if you made me pick Rory at nine or Ludwig at 12, I'd, I'd rather go with Rory at nine. Yeah. I, I, I didn't put him on my picks this week. And that's only because, like I said, I am seriously thinking of putting him also in my one and dones. So, um, I didn't want to put it all in one basket, but anyway, um, he's played here twice. He missed a cut in 2022 at one over par. And then his first and only appearance before that was back in 2013. He was runner-up at 12 under par. Uh, and by the way, even though, like you said, his best finish is 19th, he has improved his results just about every event so far this season. He just hasn't taken the big jump. Um, yep. But this is by far the first event he's played yet this season where he has a field that is completely beatable because every other event he's played in has been where all the top players in the world have attended. So, all right. True. Ludwig, as we mentioned, seven over par, missed the cut in 2022, and he's 12 to one. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's not like he's on fire as well. So I just, I, I, we both are a little bit stunned of why he's in this spot. Yeah, but totally. All right. Next up, uh, we have the next group would be Spieth, Matsuyama, at 20 to one and Homa at 22 to one. And, um, if I had to take one of these, I'd go with Matsuyama just because I think he's playing better right now. Uh, yep. they've all played here before. Spieth has the best resume because he won here back in 2021 and he's a Texas boy. Um, uh, but the last, what, four events for Jordan, two missed cuts, a 30th and a DQ. That's not good. Matter of fact, he, in last year in the Open Championship, he was 10th in the world. He's now 19th. So he's headed in the wrong direction. Matsuyama, meanwhile, is headed in the right direction. And he also has at least one good history. It was the best history that he remembers, and that is his first PGA win ever. It was at the Memorial back in, uh, I forget what year it was, but it was his last, uh, it was his tune-up for the U.S. Open that year. So, uh, and, and his last three events, 6th at TPC, 12th at Bay Hill, and winning Genesis, 15th year last year at 7 under par. Yeah, Hideki would definitely be my bet among these guys as well. Um, I actually, I strongly considered him. He's actually first in my model this week. And did you know at the players uh, last time out for Hideki, that was the second best tee to green performance of his entire career. He gained 14.2 strokes tee to green. He actually lost two strokes putting, still came sixth. Wow. Um, so yeah, he continues to hit it really well. Um, he's live this week and he's, he's definitely live next week at Augusta. Yeah, he might be a really good wager as well if you want to take a look at other future other majors down the road just because um now look he can win two green jackets we know that that's possible but it is hard to do especially within a short period of time so i might look at because you would think that and i'm just guessing but you would think his odds are probably the lowest at the masters so you would think that you should be yeah they should be yep so you're probably getting. So you might want to take a look at uh, um, how he's fared in some of the other majors, and definitely take one of those three, PGA, U.S. Open, Open, and put some money on him because I would right now the way he's playing. Yep. He looks like he's he's yep. ready for another major championship this year. Uh, and Homa just uh, he doesn't look like he's um, going in the direction that we would have liked to have seen him go. It looked like he was about mm -hmm. to, and now he's mm -hmm. kind of flailing away again but it's just a small kind of hiccup maybe but he's only played here three times and he hasn't really shown much so i believe he's a five over par uh, total in three appearances yeah homo homo is not good at the players um and you know that that happens to guys guys can struggle on that course pretty easily um but yeah i, I don't i don't see him as, as a i don't see this as a great spot for him um after what we saw at, at, at uh, the players Okay, so now we got some picks coming in. So we've got Fitzpatrick, Connors, and Morikawa at twenty-five to one, and then we have uh, Fleetwood on Norin at thirty to one. 
So uh, let's start with your top pick, and that's Colin Morikawa at 25 to 1. He'll be playing here for the first time. Uh, he's off to a slow start again. We are wondering about uh, what's gone on with Morikawa the past year and maybe a half, but um, he's you would think he's in the category of top players who want some positive momentum to go into yeah. Augusta. He doesn't want to play like this, so you know that he's going to try to play well this week. You would think that's that's his goal. Yep. Yeah, and, and you know, really this is just a number play for me. Like I think long-term in this field, I think Morikawa is what, at least a top four player in this field. You could, you could even argue that he's the second best player in this field behind Rory, I think. And he, he struggled in Florida. You know, 45th of the players missed caught at API. He's, he's just not good in florida bermuda easily his worst surface you look at through his career he just he hasn't played well um on those golf courses he was fine on the west coast you know 19th at genesis 14th at pebble beach uh, came fifth at the century in his first event of the season so um i i don't i don't think it's as bad as it it looked the last two events um but again this is mostly just a, a value play in a you know weaker field getting morikawa at 25 to 1 the guys won a bunch on the pga tour i'm just going to take my chances with them yeah that's that's kind of the way that i felt uh with the two players that i took in this area here fitzpatrick and fleetwood um because uh and and again i, I looked at their resumes prior to open to uh majors and uh let's remember that fitzpatrick uh in 2021 he was runner up the week before uh, that uh, Open Championship uh, in the 2022 at the P, uh, the week before the PGA actually the event prior it was two weeks before he was runner up uh, and before winning the U.S. Open in 2022 the week before he was tenth he was also tenth the week before the U.S. Open in 2021 and he was sixth the week before the Open Championship in 2022 so when the last couple of years when he's been at his best he has played well prior to majors. And just like you're saying, I think he's a good value play in this field this week. Yeah. Uh, he's coming off a fifth at the players. He has been inconsistent. That's the thing that I'm a little bit concerned with because he's been up, he's been down, and so forth. So is he down this week to be up next week? So that's the only thing that concerns me with Fleetwood. Let's recall he lost the playoff last year in the Canadian Open the week before the U.S. Open. So he, he, he has shown a good resume in others as well. Uh, he's got a fourth in 2022 before the open championship a sixth uh before the open championship um uh and that was i forget what year that was oh that was last year uh he's got a third before the u.s open he's got an eighth before the so bottom line fleetwood is another player that plays well before majors and he's never won on a pj tour event we know how important that would be for him um so and again he did win earlier this year so uh, I think this would be a good week for Tommy to get back into contention like he did last year in Canada. So I think both these players, based on the field and based on the odds, it's not a bad week to take them. Yeah, no, I think it's good value on both guys just based on their talent long-term form. They're also – Fleetwood and Fitzpatrick are also two of the better wind players um, in this field especially. And, you know, wind tends to be a factor at these Texas courses we saw, you know, at least in spurts last week. Uh, Fleetwood and Fitzpatrick, just like Morikawa, playing here for the first time. Somebody not playing here for the first time is Corey Connors. So uh, what, what do you think about Connors for anybody? You know, I, I, you're going to have to tell me because I've already given my um, my preference of taking Rory in a one and done. But if, mm -hmm. if I wouldn't take Rory and I'm somebody that's like, no, I'm saving Rory for the big events, and which I completely yeah. understand, then I might actually yeah. take Tommy Fleetwood this week. So he might be the guy I go with this week um, if I don't go the big the big gun route. But what about Corey Connors? Uh, because Connors has won here twice. Uh, yeah. He's never missed the cut. Everything's in the top 35. Um, and he hasn't missed the cut since the U.S. Open. That's 15 straight cuts he's made. And he's trending in the right direction with back-to-back -to -back top 20s coming in. Yeah, again, I mean, he, he's hitting it awesome. He's first in this field, you know, ahead of Rory, ahead of Ludwig and, you know, my, my, my ball striking metric that we looked at um, now the, the around the green stuff and the putting remains a problem for Corey Connors. But as you'd expect, he's putted well here. He's gained strokes putting in four of his five appearances at Valero. Um, so yeah, my, my concern for one and done would be that Connors is going to be popular, maybe the most popular pick just based on the course history. Um, so it's maybe some, something where if you're, if you're 
you know, kind of playing with the lead in one and done. If you're off to a good start and you don't really care about ownership, you can consider Connors. If you're trying to play catch up, um, I might look elsewhere and just try to get a bit more different. Would this be the only event, though, that you could see yourself taking Corey Connors in one and done? I mean, I think it's the best event for him. I'm not sure it's the only event. I mean, I had nothing off the top of my head, um, but I think, you know, he'll be in other weaker fields i'm sure where you know he'll be one of the you know top 10 guys in odds and i think you could consider him in something like that all right i'm going to pop up uh, the picks uh as we move along here just so everybody can see what we went with there's jared picks he's got six and i have seven and we've already talked about our top three picks so let's go ahead and continue because we still have two more players at 30 to one and one of those players is on my list and that's alex noren um, mm. On, I was definitely considering. Why not? Yep. I mean, he's played here four times. He's got two top tens. We kind of feel he's, he's he's due for a win this year, the way he's playing. He's coming off a miscut of players, but he's got five top 25s this year, including two top fives in the runner-up playoff loss at Sony. So he's a solid uh, uh, idea. Um, but the other one, Norin, you know, with Norin, uh, he's made 12 straight cuts, seven top 25s, three top tens, two top fives in a runner-up. And he was 15th year last year, so he's played the golf course. And in his last three coming in, 11th, 19th, and 9th. And maybe there'll be some good karma for Noren this week with Jaeger winning. Because we talked about a Jaeger had, I believe, six Euro wins. No PGA wins. Finally gets the PGA win. Well, Noren's had a better career than Jaeger here in the States. But and he also oversees. He's got 10 Euro wins with no PGA wins. So maybe there'll be some good karma this week for Noren as well. Yeah, I consider both these guys too. I was kind of hoping for better numbers for them as bets. Um, but I like them both as one and done options. Noren especially. Um, you mentioned how well he's playing. He's actually uh, eighth in this field in strokes gain total this year. And he is first in this field in strokes gain on Texas courses. You mentioned you know, him playing well here. He obviously played well last week at the Houston Open. He's the best player in this field um, over the last 36 rounds in Texas. Yeah, well, he's maybe uh, probably a sleeper one-and-done player then. If you want somebody that nobody's probably going to take uh, that yep. could uh, surprise, then keep an eye on Norin. All right, also at 35-1, to 1, you've got Horschel, Harmon, and English. Now I've picked I picked up Billy Horse from my fantasy in our in our league this this week because I, I he's too good to have been playing so poorly and now he's starting to get mm-hmm. hot so I thought it was the perfect time he's coming in with back to back top 15 seventh last uh, last week he has four top 15s on this course over nine appearances three of those are top fives he has missed a cut in two of his last three so he's been hit or miss here but when he's on he's on. And he has three top 15s in his last four events with two top 10s, as I mentioned, coming in. So I like I like that kind of combination with Horschel coming in this week. Harmon, not necessarily. He's never had anything better than a top 25 here. And in his last three trips, which were 15, 16, and 19, because um, he, he has a play here since 2019, Two missed cuts and a 51st. Uh, English, meanwhile, does not have a top 25 in five appearances. So I would mm-hmm. definitely take Horschel out of these three. It'd be English for me. Um, he's, he's just playing really well consistently, like gaining strokes in, in all facets of his game. He's actually he's ninth best in this field in strokes gained total this season so far. Um I, I just kind of I kind of like the way he's trending. Um, you know, he came 19th at the players uh, last time out. He had never I think he had never made the cut there, right? That's possible. It sounds sounds yeah, right. I think if not, yeah, he had if never, not, it was uh, once. He had, yeah, he had missed the cut in what is this? Seven straight appearances at the players. Um, so I, I just like the way he, he's trending. Um, he'd be my pick here. Though. You know, thirty five is a bit short for me to bet it. Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, Jan is uh, kind of high on English this year. That's why she uh, grabbed him in on her fantasy team. And uh, like you said, you know, if you look at it all year long, he's had two bad results. Everything else has been a top 25 and he's got the seventh at Genesis. So, yeah. Um, The only thing, again, that the major thing that would concern me, though, is he's just not played well here. So, all right. Um, Next up, uh, we have the next group. We got Scott, Henley, Cole, uh, Bazootenhoot. 
uh, let's let's go with that group because you have what your what your second pick, Christian Bazunhut, and um, I like them as well. Uh, I think he's a solid play because he's really uh, seems to be playing his best, most consistent golf on the PG Tour at this point. Uh, the yeah. odds are also pretty uh, are okay compared to some of the others, but he's trending really well, and he was a solid uh, top thirty uh, last year, so he's had at least some experience on the course. Right, Bez is first in this field in uh, strokes gain total so far in 2024. Wow. Yeah, ahead of all these guys. He's also sixth in this field in strokes gain in Texas. So I kind of like how those two things mesh. I think this should be a good spot for him. He's um, obviously come very close. He you know, got the first place money at Amex with his actual second place finish to, to Dunlap. Uh, he came ninth last time out at Valspar. So I, I just think he's close. And I think, again, he's done well on Texas courses. All right. And the other guys that I mentioned there, Scott won the first event ever played at TPC San Antonio back in 2010, but hasn't done much since. Only played here a couple other times, which is, well, it's, it, he did defend his championship the next year. And then he's only played once since then. Um, Henley played here a couple times, hasn't shown anything. Cole, 39th last year, no top fives this year. So he hasn't, uh, captured the momentum that he had at the end of the year. Tom Kim at 50 to one. That shows you what kind of year he's had. And he hasn't yeah. been uh, playing well at all over his last three appearances, but it still kind of surprises me in a field like this that he's 50 to one. Yeah, he, he's definitely on my radar still it's just a, a, a value play kind of like morikawa right like i know he's not playing super well but um you know just long-term form i think 50 to 1 uh, in this field for tom kim is, is a pretty good number uh, he's another guy who i think is pretty good in the win i know he, he played well at the open last year which is you know always a windy event so um if, if this gets windy here i haven't really looked at the forecast yet for this week um, but i assume there's going to be some wind which would probably be good news for tom kim all right, and then we've got the next group, uh, Hostler, McNeely, McCarthy, uh, Badia, Rye, uh, between 50 and 55 to 1. And um, uh, this is actually uh, where we're going to get your third choice. So right now I have, I've already had my top four, but my remaining three are long shots, um, being Fitzpatrick, Fleetwood, Noren, and Horschel. You have Morikawa, Bazudenhut, and Badia. As your third choice at 55 to 1. He is trending in the right direction. A couple of top 20s, 11th last week. Uh, of course, he won the Barracuda last year. He's played here twice. He was 46th last year. Yeah, actually, coming off a really encouraging event last week. He was actually second in the field last week in stroke scan approach. Do you know who, do you know who led the field last week in stroke scan approach? Who led the field in stroke scan approach last week? Uh, I don't think you'll get it, but it's a it's oh. a it's a good name. Is it really Gary? Gary Woodland. Gary Woodland. So really? he might he might be back. He's yeah he's someone to. Where uh, did he finish? Keep an eye on. He finished twenty first. He was putted oh. horribly, about six strokes putting. Gary the Woodland might awesome. be back. So that, that was yeah that was that was nice to see. But actually, it was second stroke skiing approach. Uh, he's another guy uh loves playing in the wind even you know even when it got windy at the houston open that's like kind of when he started to make his move so i, I kind of like him on these texas courses um you just yeah trending in the right direction a guy long term i want to be in on and i think 55 to 1 is a pretty good number in this field okay let's see uh hostler was fourth on this uh uh course in 2022 that's his only top 30 but that's a solid sign um mcneely 35th in 2022. He's made uh, seven straight cuts, a couple top tens. McCarthy, uh, he was 18th his last time out a couple years ago here. He's got a couple top 20s. Uh, he's never been over par here, uh, even though he missed a cut once. Um, and uh, he, he's trending a little bit in the right direction, but um, he's not. he hasn't really been contending yet. And Rye uh, could be interesting. He was top 30 yeah. both appearances, both at five and six under par coming off a seventh place finish last week so yeah right right someone i considered um just hitting it really well uh, he's really accurate which can be important here if you get too far offline at this course you can sort of get in trouble um i just he's a guy i've seen him in the mix falter too often so i don't really trust him to win like if you want to make a top 10 bet on rye that's kind of the direction i'd go uh keith mitchell at 65 to one but a big surprise 
after he blows Valspar on Sunday, <laughs> he comes back last week and misses the cut. Big surprise. Uh, he's actually played pretty well here in his two appearances, but we, we, yeah. we said what we had to say about Keith Mitchell last week, and it's still, still uh, we, we haven't changed our minds after what, what happened last week. Um, yep. Putnam at 70, Hoygaard, Glover, K.H. Lee, Thompson, Todd, and Shank at 75 to 1. And in this group, we have a pick each uh, as we go with the long shots. You have Lucas Glover, and I have K.H. Lee. And I like Glover as well. I, I, so I, I like Glover. I definitely feel like he's worth a few bucks. He's coming off an 11th at Valspar. He's got three top 20s out of five here. And how about this? He's 32 under par combined over his last four appearances at this golf course. So you're getting 75 to 1 on a player that looks like he might be getting his game up again. And K.H. Yeah. Lee, as I mentioned, is uh, is my pick in this, uh, in, in this group here. Uh, he's got two top 25s out of three, one top 15. He's got the two Byron Nelson wins, of course, in Texas. And he's also been playing well over his last four events. He has two top 10s and one top five. Uh, but uh, what about your pick, Lucas Glover? Yeah, he's just having a really steady season, kind of, you know, continuing from the tail end of uh, last year when he, he won a couple times. You know, he hasn't, he hasn't popped and won. But he's continuing to, to gain strokes across the board in most tournaments. He's actually gained strokes on approach in six straight. So you can kind of count on his iron play being solid. Um, as you said, he's been good here. Um, sixth best in our course history over the last five years. So just a guy playing well on a course he likes at 75 to one, who, who again, won twice, um, you know, less than nine months ago. So um, seems like a guy worth taking a shot on. Yep. Uh, and then the 80 to 1 group, we have Van Royen, Gim, Riley, Montgomery, and Griffin. Out of this group, uh, Gim is part of your picks. We talked uh, about him uh, a couple of weeks ago. And if you take a yep. look at, uh, um, I mean, so overall, you know, we, we, we like the trajectory of, you know, his uh, future. Uh, uh, on this tour. The question is, are you going to be able to get him the week that he wins? He hasn't shown much here. He's missed a cut his last two appearances, but again, he's playing better than he's ever played on the PGA tour. Yeah. I'll admit there's a chance that Gim like missed this window to win. Cause he, he was, you know, playing really well. Mexico, uh, the cognizant players played well, all three of those events last two times out 67th at Valspar missed cut at Houston, um, lost strokes on approach in both of those events. So again, there, may, maybe it's kind of over for Gim for now, but still, even with those last two events, he's still second in this field in strokes gain total so far this season. Bezaden, who is one Gim is number two. Um, so maybe he can find it again. Um, and again, he's, he's 90 to one, so a guy, a guy who's hit it that well this season at 90 to one, I think is, is, a, a good gamble. Yeah. He's dropped to 80, but it's still a good number. And, uh, he's definitely, I, I think maybe Van Royen would be the only other guy I would take in this group over him. I mean, Montgomery, uh, has missed his last two cuts was 22nd last year here at six under par. Riley, we haven't heard his name in a while, so maybe he's perfect for this golf course with that ranking of 223rd. But he was 14th last week, so that's the first time we heard about him in a while. Um, yeah. Meanwhile, uh, you go over to the next group and you got Hubbard, Hodges, Cauley, Eckroat, and Rogers at 90 to 1. Out of that group, I probably would go with Rogers because he's played, um, uh, he's coming off a fifth place finish here last year. And even though he's not playing well over his last three events, but Eck wrote he's not winning a second time. Cauley, <laughs> I'm actually surprised that uh, he's 90 to 1. Uh, he's a nice story, but I don't know why he's 90 to 1. Yeah. Hodges, same thing. He's not winning a second time within a, in a year. <laughs> and Mark Hubbard, I guess he would be the other guy, but he hasn't particularly played well here. Yeah, you know, if I was going to bet one of these, I'd, I'd go Acro. I, you know, I get it's tough to win twice in a month or whatever. It's tough for any of these guys to win. Um, I think you know the fact that Acro's done it. I think he's the most talented guy in this in this range. Um, he played his college golf at Oklahoma State, so he should be used to you know this type type of, of golf course. Um, and then you know, Bud Cole is interesting. I, I if he was one hundred thirty to one, I might bet him because he's he's hitting it really well. Um, you look at his off the tee and approach numbers. You know, 
really in his four events this season, they've been strong in, in all four of them. He's putting horribly, so that's what he needs to figure out. But um, you know, ball striking wise, he's he's kind of figured it out. Um, but again, ninety's a bit short for me. And again, look when when the Peter Malnati's of the world win, and uh, after what we've seen already this year with the long shots, anything's <laughs> possible. But yes, yes. Uh, now like I said, that would be a really nice story if Coley can get in the uh, in in, uh, in in the driver's seat with a win on the PGA Tour. At 100 to one area, we've got Ryder, Novak, Kevin Yu, Victor Perez. Um, and Kevin Yu, he's got a little cold now, but is another player that we've talked about. Just this is in the week. Ryder keeps kind of looking like he's interesting to go with. He was third here last year at 13 under par. Um, so he could be interesting. And uh, you have finally jumped on the Andrew Novak uh, yes. bandwagon. Uh, so I'm glad <laughs> to see that. So I don't have to take him this week. Uh, he's coming <laughs> off a ninth place finish here last year at nine under par. Right. Uh, and you're getting again a good number at 100 to one. Yeah, that was his first uh, career PGA top ten when he top ten tier last year. Um, it just continues to hit hit the ball really well. You know, even last week 53rd at Houston, but he gained three strokes off the tee. He just you know didn't chip it, didn't putt it too well. Um, the irons ha- have been hot for a while now. Um, kind of surprised he's still 100 to one, honestly, um, just with the way he's playing and the fact that he came ninth here last year. Yeah, even in this field, he's just not getting respect. So try to take advantage of it. Uh, one of my final long shots, uh, and uh, as we take a look at the rest, is going to be Ryan Moore. And I like Ryan Moore this week. Uh, if you look at Moore, he's starting to now put it together. He, had, he, he showed some glimpses in the fall, and here he is now in his last three events. He does have a fifth-place finish. He's, he's been top 45 in all three. Field is better. Uh, he's got four top 20s on this golf course, three top 10s, and one top five. Now, you might look and go, well, wait a second. The last two times he's played here, he's had a combined seven over par. Missed the cut, 76th. But if you look at it, that's been recently before he's gotten back again. Th- those two years, three years stretch, he was just awful. Actually, about two years. He was just bad everywhere. So I don't care about that. What I look at is what he was the first five appearances here. He was a combined 46 under par here. That's the player we're starting to see again now. That's the reason why I think with everything, you know, the field, the way he's playing, his experience here at 110 to 1, I think he's a good play. Well, he's third on our uh, ball striking. And he's third on your list, list too. Um, and that and that's despite a bad start to the season. That's basically all come the last three weeks or his, his last three tournaments. Um, at the players, he gained 6.1 strokes on approach, nine strokes gained on approach at Valspar, 4.6 gains uh, strokes gained at Houston. So the irons are red hot. Um, he just the, the putter has been the issue, which tends to be his problem. But he just needs you know one decent week with the putter, and he he could definitely be in the mix. Yeah, and uh, and keep in mind though that remember it's he got up to a slow start this year uh, because this season um, he had those uh, good runs at the end in fall uh, when he was 13th at Shriners, fifth at Bermuda, and eighth at the RSM Classic. But yeah, he starts the, the new year and he's got four straight missed cuts and five missed cuts out of six. So. And it's interesting how that happens. You're in the fall. It's a completely different golf courses. It's completely different fields. And then you get to once when January hits, it's like it's like playing with the big boys, even though it's the same tour. You know, yep. it's like the fall is like you're playing on the KFT tour. Once you get to the yep. uh, uh, new year, it's like yeah, you're back on the PJ tour again. Um, the only other long shot that I have, and this shouldn't be a surprise, I'm going back to Matty Schmid. I see no reason to jump off of him at this point. He's 130 to one. He's 46th here last year at one, one under par. His last four events, and by the way, just like Moore, played well in the fall last year, um, and now he's getting hot again. Uh, his last four events, all in the top 30, including one top 10, 21st last week. Yeah. Hot, hot player. I know the guy Jan has talked about is um, a talented guy to keep an eye on. So, yeah, why not? This is definitely the, um, the type of tournament I think he, he could he could find a win. And the only other players that I was thinking about taking long shot wise was I, I was I was just interested, but I can't take him because he was so close to winning last week is the kid Toasty. Another player <laughs> that Jan mentioned uh, last year on the show about a, a player to keep an eye on, a real future player to keep an eye on. And, and now that's his first big coming out party. Usually yep. you don't see a player come out 
play like that and then come back the next week and win. That's just that's asking too much. He he is a character, so I would like to see him in the mix more often because he's he's entertaining if nothing else. Um, the the two super long shots I consider my guy Sam Stevens, who he came second here last year, correct? Yep. Yes, he did. He's just he's just he's just not playing well, so I so I just didn't get to him. But he is like. 200 or 250 to one. So if you want to just toss a couple bucks on him, it wouldn't kill you. And then um, Parker Cootie uh, looks pretty good in the numbers I'm looking at this week. He's obviously you know, a Texas guy, so should be familiar with the area, with the course. Um, he was like 300 to one last I checked. So if you wanted a couple bombs, those are two guys I considered. So it seems like you have a preference on Parker over, uh, what is it, Pierce is on? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Parker you, and Pearson, right? Pearson. Yeah. I don't um, know if that's Pearson. That's that's a really interesting <laughs> yeah. long way of saying Pearson. But yeah, Parker. Why do you like Parker over Pearson at this point? Honestly, just the numbers I'm looking at. He's he's been better across the board. Okay. And I know it's it's a small sample stuff. You know, who knows Pearson might end up being better. But you know, at least so far on the PGA Tour, Parker has the better numbers. And Pearson was a uh, number one amateur at some at one point, I believe. Um, yeah. So, yeah, as far as any others, I was looking at Victor Perez. We've talked about him before. He continues to play well. Three top 20s out of his last four events. He'll be playing this one for the first time. So I, I was a little intrigued there. Um, uh, we've used a, a lot of long shots this week. I mean, Martin Laird has actually been playing decent golf. He's the 2013 champ of this event. He's 180 to one. Ryan Palmer, you always, whenever you think of Ryan Palmer, the only time you ever think of taking him is at Texas. Almost the same thing with Charlie Hoffman, because Charlie Hoffman, I think he's about 150 to one. He's made 12 out of 13 cuts here. Nine of those are top 15s, five top fives, three runner ups, and a win. Mm. Uh, he so this has clearly got to be his best golf course, and he won this event back in 2016. Uh, but he hasn't played well, surprisingly, since his runner up uh, playoff loss. Uh, to Taylor in Phoenix. But Hoffman is somebody that, um, and Palmer are, are a couple of guys that when you get to this uh, kind of venue in Texas that you would take a look at. Palmer has six top 20s here. He's played here every year since they've been at TPC San Antonio, and he does have a top five. Um, but yeah, he, he's just not playing well. And Ho Hoffman used to be the uh, horse for the course here before it was, or, yeah, before it was uh, Corey Connor. So, yeah. Oh, and uh, we, you know, we might as well mention his name because we haven't mentioned it before, and that's David Skins. So David Skins has popped up twice this year, fourth at the old Honda event and seventh last week. He hasn't done anything else. He didn't do it. We never heard of. I never heard of his name even before this year. But interesting. And he was forty eighth year la uh, in twenty twenty two. His only appearance. But um, yeah, it's, it's it's interesting. He's a guy that just has come from nowhere. Uh, to mm -hmm. get in competition uh, a couple times. Uh, do, do you like any of these other guys like um, Joe Highsmith or uh, who else's uh, names here that I've, that I've mentioned that we've kind of seen? Uh, a few, uh, Max Grace, uh, Graserman. Um, these are guys that have just been popping up recently. Anybody yeah, I'm else? just looking through some numbers now. Highsmith seems like that might have just been a flash in the pan. Gra Graserman has been hitting it well. Um, really most of the season. I mean, you know, he, he's, he's made some cuts. You know, that was the first time he, he was in the mix, um, but he made the cut at Amex, made the cut at Cognizant, made the cut at Puerto Rico, made the cut at Valspar. So he's, he's kind of interesting. He was seventh last week. Yeah. So yep. who's yep. the guy with the, with the, with the, the Gilligan hat? That's Highsmith. That's Highsmith. Highsmith so. was rocking the, the bucket hat. Yep. Yeah. He, he, uh, he's, uh, yeah. I just, you know, if I'm like a friend of one of these guys and going to kick that thing off, will you stop it? Yeah, uh, kind of like a clown. Yeah, you're gonna end up like McNally. You want to? You want a career like that? Get, get the hat off. <laughs> then he, he does have two PJ wins though. Um, by the way, Ricky Fowler's playing this week, I believe, and uh, he just hasn't played well yet. Um, is he in the field? He, he was in the field. in the field. He still is, right? I think he was about. Yeah, what are his odds? What are his odds, odds of? Uh, well, he was in the field as of yesterday, unless he backed out. Yep, there he is. Uh, oh, he's 110 to 1 now. Wow. He was 55 to 1 on he Monday. Is, he he has been he's been horrible. What a drop. He, he's been he's he's been even worse I think than the results might show. I mean, he's had some good putting weeks the last four times out, but the ball striking's been a mess. 
And he's played here four times. He has three top 20s, but he's just not yeah. playing well at all. All right, so there you go. Uh, that's good, the tune-up for the Masters. And uh, next week is going to be awesome. We're going to get an opportunity to uh, get going here for majors. Do you already know who you're taking for your one and done next week? No, I don't. Um, I don't. I haven't thought that far. I'm still trying to figure out who I'm taking this week. I think. I think I'm. Um, I think I'm leaning Norin this week. You are. One and done. Okay. Um, yeah. You know, and and Hideki. I think Hideki would be interesting as well. I might consider Hideki next week too. Um, I think I, I think you do want to be careful with the majors and remember that these prize pools are significantly lower than they are for the yep. elevated events. Yeah. So like, I'm not saying you can't use a top five player at the Masters, but I think it's better to use somebody you know more in that ten to twenty range, just to you know sort of match it up with without the price price pool is. Yeah, that's that's the thing. That's that's why it's like as much as I'd like to win and take a McElroy if he wins. It's like you probably like. What would you what, like? You could finish where in the Masters and be making more money than Rory if you won this week. Where would that be? You think? Uh, yeah, it's I, pro, I mean, de- definitely he would def- definitely still need top five at the Masters. Top he might five. even be like two or three. Yeah, I mean, it's I think it's still like one and a half million to the winner this week. Okay, um, so it's not it's not nothing. No, but. it's not. That's why I'm saying yeah. If you're gonna do it, you have to be desperate like me. Um, yeah. I'm just, I just want to win. That's all. Uh, for Fleetwood, again, that's a possibility as well, as I said. But you're looking at Matsuyama and Norin? But yeah, you're leaning so. towards Norin? Yep. All right. Excellent. And then uh, we will talk more next week. Again, Jan's going to head to Augusta, so we'll find out exactly what her schedule is going to be like. Uh, obviously, whatever she does next week, we won't find out until the week after. So um, who knows? Maybe we'll get to talk to her the next couple of weeks and find out uh, what kind of video she's able to get um next week while she's there maybe the best video she can get really is and maybe she's invited or she can jump in on any one of those parties around town because they're going to have all sorts of get-togethers they all rent the houses and you know in, in, in the in the area so maybe she jumps in on one of those and she can uh take her video camera with her and, and use it there so anyway we'll uh, we'll find out what kind of accomplishments she has at the gusta next week for our show in a couple of weeks but next week it's the masters so uh this is uh, these are one of the events we all look forward to jared yeah we gotta find out what we gotta do to have Jan get us down there next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know about that, but uh, uh, it might take a while. But actually, you know, the <laughs> trick is is that we, we, we got to build the channel. And once the channel gets built seriously, then we have a much better chance because then it's like, oh, wow, you got, you're on that really popular YouTube channel that has all those really cool videos and stuff. That you have a much better okay. chance. I would That's think. The goal. That's the goal. I know. What is it like? I, I remember like 20 years ago, there was like a 10 year waiting period. I wonder if oh, it's like 30 now. I'm on the, I'm on the, I've been on the list, you know, for master's tickets for 15 years. It's just a random. Oh, oh now it's 15 and years. I, okay. Well, no, I, I, that's how long I've been on the, there, there's, there's not a waiting list. It's just everyone's name gets put in a lottery draw and every, yeah. every year they just they randomly pull and uh, evidently it's, it's very tough to get them because I have not yet been picked. <laughs> I would guess. It's, uh, I wonder how many people are in that lottery, though. Probably an awful lot. So. Yes, got to be. All right, sounds good. But watch, the, the, the only time you get the opportunity, and it'll be like one of those things where, you know, you've got like this two-week trip to Europe planned that you've been waiting, <laughs> your, your wife's been waiting for 30 uh, to 20 I'd, years for. I'd, can't, I'd cancel that trip to Europe. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to. You'd have to. She might cancel. She'd, under, she'd understand, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. We'll talk to you guys next week. Enjoy everybody. And uh, yeah, can't wait for the Masters. So uh, enjoy Texas. We'll see you then.